Hi everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a collaboration video with Desiree over at Include a Thank You. I will have her um, video listed below. I'm using a couple of products, very few products today. I'm using Hero Arts Nasturtium and Pink and Main um, Special... day and then this simple stories summer fresh six by six pad and i have had this forever and when i picked it up i had grand plans for it but it doesn't really work with my card making like to make cards for large panels so it's kind of just something i use to paper piece and if you've watched my channel at all you know that i love my copics i've been practicing with my watercolors but i always try to sneak in some paper piecing and today is no different um desiree is going to be trying paper piecing and i'm super excited to see what she comes up with because that is not a technique that she does very often so I am going to leave most of my process in here because I'm not sure how many people actually do paper piece on a regular basis. Um, this tape that I'm using, it's Scotch repositionable tape. I use it a lot. Um, it lets me kind of get right in there and hold my pieces down um, without using a magnet because that would get in the way. Uh, but what I, how I see paper piecing is, is another way to color. Um, these flowers are so pretty and I have a couple of videos already using this stamp and I love to color them they are they're big enough to practice on and get your shading um, but small enough so they don't take all day and um, I, I really love coloring them they are they are just beautiful um, but this is another way to color them using pattern paper and this uh, pattern paper pack has a lot of these little tiny pieces of paper and um, it lets me it lets me get all of the flowers without well it lets me get all of the pieces of flowers okay so one of the tips and or tricks that I have for paper piecing is paper piecing looks really cool whether you do this or not but if you shade your pieces uh, you get a little bit more dimension almost as if you really did color them um, so I like to use you know just a gray combination when I'm paper piecing to shade things there you can see the difference there but this is a C3 and a C0 and I'm just going in and putting the C3 where it would be the darkest and the C0 I'm blending it out and I did that for all of the flower pieces it just adds some extra dimension and um, a little bit of how did you do that to this card which is super cool and then here I had a kind of paper pieced this paper pieced flower with two pieces I didn't have a big enough piece left by the time I got to this flower so I just pieced it together uh, and you'll see that um, I just kind of layer it up when I put it on the flower and you really can't tell so when I paper piece, I also like to run around the edges with this Tombow marker. It, I think it is black, but it might just be a really dark gray. Um, it's the N25 marker. It's good enough. I've had it forever and it's good enough for me. <laughs> I also noticed that the tip doesn't fray as much as um, some other people. They have a different brand. And then um, this repositionable tape comes in so handy in my craft room. I just stuck all those flowers to it, stuck it off to the side. And then I had stamped this on Nina and uh, 80 pounds. So I wanted to do a little bit of Copic coloring to mix in with my paper piecing because I really didn't want to paper piece all those flowers. You don't have to paper piece the entire image when you do piecing, um, which is kind of nice. You can just add a little bit of character or a fun pattern where you don't have to color it. I mean, look at all those pattern papers that you have been hoarding. This is a good opportunity to get them out. So here I was just going um, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest, and I was putting the darkest um, shadows where things would lay on top of each other, and these are kind of uh, like cupped leaves. I'm, I'm pretty sure I um, have done some googling and on these flowers and I have I think they're pretty cupped so 
It's kind of how they look like when they're drawn. So I used this combination to add the darkest, you know, down in there and then um, brought it back out to the lightest. And I think this YG63 actually is the lightest, but I like YG17. It is my favorite green marker. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's just like the perfect color green. So I did go over everything and it just, um, I don't know if it brightened it, but it did something to the color, which is actually called glazing, Copic glazing. Uh, when you go over and change the tone of your markers and you keep the shading there. I just really liked the color that this ended up uh, for my flowers. It goes well with that red pattern paper that I picked. So after I had all of that done, you can see here I was using the very tip of my marker to fill in the vines because the vines are kind of flowy and they were just going to get filled in. I was not doing any shading there. Uh, they are super, super skinny. So after that was done, I took an R24, which is super similar to the pattern paper that I'm using, the main color, and I just went around the outside edges of my flowers. And usually when I paper piece, I do this because if my piece isn't quite lined up, you will not really see it because that red is underneath or the matching color. And then along with drawing the black, on, you know, or going around the edges with the black marker, it kind of hides any of those imperfections that happen in a handmade card that is not made by one of the giant manufacturers that just has a bunch of love in it. So uh, you can see this really come to life as I start to lay down these flowers. I know these flowers wouldn't have this pattern in real life, but I think that it just adds kind of a quaint quality to this image here. And I made sure I got glue in all the places. So you see me take that stick and kind of make sure I had all of the glue up into the teeniest, tiniest places. And uh, I do that just so nothing lifts and it makes a big difference um, for everything to appear flat, even though you added dimension and you're adding layers. I just think that it works out well. So here I put down this bigger part of the flower and I didn't trim it all the way off but you'll see that I layer this other piece over top and I'm not sure if I show it or not but the um, the, the bottom part of the petals I hadn't colored with or, or run across with the Tombow marker so I did lift it up and just run along the edge so it helps hide that and then I did run this through my die cut machine and cut it out after I had it all done I find that um, piecing it together before I cut it out really helps because it's a much bigger piece. Uh, this die is pretty cool because it cuts out all those inside pieces and I do really like it. Now one thing about paper piecing is now I can go back through this paper pad and all of these bits and pieces of paper coordinate. And uh, there are some larger panels like this in here. So I thought I would use that blue jean piece And then, and then I wasn't sure. And then, and then I decided I was going to use it. And this is the process of my card making that can kind of take forever because I want things to look good. Um, but sometimes I struggle with what I should use and like making a decision. In the end, I decided, well, I used this red pattern and I had another strip in this other sheet of paper. So I decided I would use that. And I really like how that looked because it's identical to the pattern on the flowers. Um, and so before I got too far here, what I did is stamped my flower on the inside of my card base. And I did that with some Tattered Rose Distress Ink. It kind of resembles that muted red tone that is in the pattern paper, uh, but it's not the same. So, I mean, if you were going for matchy matchy, that does not match, uh, it just has the same feel. And then I use that pink and main set, um, Great Day, I think it's called. Um, I had it listed before and I just uh, stamped the much love from that on the inside, or much luck, sorry, much luck on the inside of here on top of those flowers. It gives me plenty of space to write a message. And then I used the little leftover strip, which is kind of like burlap looking, and I stamped the additional sentiment there, or the actual main sentiment. 
And the way this is going to work is there is a sentiment on that blue jean looking panel um, and this will coordinate with it really well. That's why I chose the white embossing powder. Uh, this is uh, Brutus Monroe Alabaster White and uh, I do like this. I have a couple of different white embossing powders and I don't know, it just depends on what I grab. Um, and this says we're rooting for you and I thought that that was kind of like a dad joke to go with this flower. I thought it looked, I thought it worked well, but I thought it was definitely a dad joke. Um, and then I didn't, well, I was measuring, you see me measuring, like counting the squares. I wanted to make sure that this was going to be the right size panel, but I didn't want to not have a like detail on the edge. But the die that I wanted to use was exactly the same size. So I let the die edge go off the edge of the paper. And so it's just going to put a stitch line all the way around this panel. And um, it's just another really cool way to get a little bit of detail without having to use the die to cut it. Uh, it didn't, well, my panel is not exactly. So here I had to trim the little like red piece off just a little bit. Um, but I have this stitching all the way around, which I think goes well with this, like the, the design of this with the blue jean and the strips and it looks like embroidery on there. And then it almost looks like these flowers are embroidered because of the pattern that's on them. And then I cut a fishtail banner in my sentiment here, um, just on the end. And then I thought, well, it's gonna be kind of plain. I knew that I was going to end up with a border and so I pulled out this brown cardstock from my stash. You're going to watch me fiddle here quite a bit and I left it in because I want to, to show you that cards don't always go together super easy. This one wasn't hard but I did a lot of fiddling and futzing with it before I really decided that I liked it. And then out of that same um, stitched shapes set that I used the rectangle from, they have this little banner in there. So I selectively cut out of that floral so that I had the red flower. So um, there's two red flowers kind of in the bottom, like in that little collection down there. So I wanted to have one up at the top. And I added foam tape to my floral image. Then I added a piece of foam tape to this banner, but not exactly at the top. Um, and then I kind of curled up the ends and stuck the foam tape down. So I lined up the edges. And then I pulled out my stapler, my good old office supply stapler, and I stapled it down. I just thought that would be kind of quaint there. Um, and then I added a tiny little dot of glue so I could line this up. And my sentiment is crooked. Okay, there are reasons that it's crooked. It looks good with all that little mishmash of like banners down at the bottom. But if you have watched Desiree's channel at all, you will know that she is a fan of things that are not exactly straight. She likes to put things on her card wonky, at an angle, uh, at a certain, like, she just thinks that it adds so much uh, design and um, interest to a card. And I absolutely agree. I think if I would have laid that on there straight, it wouldn't have quite the same feel and I get where she gets that. Sometimes I struggle with having things perfectly straight and I have to remember that it is a handmade card and sometimes Desiree and her it is good enough is good enough. So um, so that's why I did that 100% in Desiree's honor. So here I finished up the insides of my flowers with some white gel pen and this is my number 10 gel pen which is my favorite gel pen. And then um, I adhered this panel to my card base um, and made sure that, you know, I had it on there nice and solid with a bunch of ATG and it just, it wasn't finished. So I pulled out the number five gel pen, which is a much finer um, gel pen. It is not my favorite. It does not glide the same, but this one works really well. And I went around and added details to the edges of all of the petals into the leaves and it's a super fine line of white and it made a lot of difference. It really made 
made it look complete. And then I took my black glaze pen and I added just a few more dots to the insides of the flowers. I really wanted to highlight the center, you know, the, the centers of the flowers. Then I pulled out this Simon Says Stamp Smooch Sequins mix and I pulled out a bunch of them. I really liked the um, color combinations here. It's red and gold and like clear and um, kind of a clear green. And I just thought that these really kind of matched that sort of, I guess, a vintage vibe um, that this card gives off. It kind of looks like it's all embroidered. I can just imagine this on somebody's jeans, like embroidered patches on someone's jeans and, and they're at some concert. And I just, I love how this card turned out. And I think it all revolves around paper piecing those flowers because it just really takes center stage and it is so unique. So I absolutely encourage you to first of all check out Desiree's channel. To second of all, try paper piecing. Third of all, put your sentiment on Crooked. It's okay. And I absolutely appreciate you stopping by. Um, as I always say, give cards generously. And I would love to chat with you in those comments. Have a great day. Bye.